Watch it carefully one more time. My hand goes first. My elbow moves second. I tilt third. I torque, and then I complete the step. And the reason your timer was off was because you, as most of us are, have a tendency to respond to body movement, whereas when the weapon moves independently of the body, it's not quite as easy to detect. This is why we call this a form of deceptive penetration. Now watch this, just put your hands on your hips now and get nice and relaxed. Let me break this down one more time and give you another idea of what I mean by how it throws your timing off. Watch this carefully. Now this time, Mike, this is what I'm going to do. You just stand there just like this so you're nice and comfortable and relaxed. I'm going to make an initial move towards you. I might start to throw a punch. I might start to throw a kick. Okay? I'm not going to hit you. But the instant you see me squeeze that trigger, I want to see how fast you can key out. On a little short key out like this, high in the throat. Listen how short and quick this is. See how quick that is? Try it once. Let's see how fast you can key out. Good. Then you sound a little congested, a little quick. Good. Now, as soon as I move, you react. All right? And we're going to judge your timing speed by how long it takes you to react. Watch it carefully. Let's see what happens. All right? You get nice and relaxed. Take a deep breath. Drop the shoulders so you can relax real Relax and respond really quickly. All right? Ready? So you see me coming. Let's see how fast you can react. Ready? Mm, a little slow there. Let's try it again. Ready? A little bit better, a little bit better. Let's try it again. Good. Try it again real fast. Good. Now the timing speed is pretty much on. Now, let's try it again. Only this time, while I'm doing that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my hand and I'm going to reach up there and uh, touch you on the forehead. If you see my hand coming, you key out. You understand? Yes, sir. Okay. You got it? Don't let me touch your head before you key out. Now I'm going to tell you here in advance, you're not going to see my hand coming. Let's see if you do. Ready? You understand the exercise? As soon as you see me move, chi out. See how fast you are. Hey. Huh? A little bit slower. Come on, fast, fast. Hey. Good. Hey. Good. Hey. Good. Hey. Good. Hey. Whoa there, what's the key out? <laughs> now see what happened? Never catch that? Real important what I'm doing here. Now notice, I threw you off on two accounts. And this is what we call two principles being used against you. Let me explain these principles in explicit detail so you can understand them. It took me about 14 months to perfect this to where I could go into competition and actually use it. But to my advantage, 1968 when I started using this after I worked with Bruce Lee for a while, uh, I won 11 straight tournaments without being beat. See, so it's an excellent, excellent principle. And it's the one principle which I would say is the most supreme of all when it comes to developing your speed. So you keep this in mind. When you're working on your speed, all right, it's three kinds of speed. It's what we call miles per hour speed. That's like your rate of speed. The amount of time it takes your punch or kick to go from one point to the target. That's what most people work on. Then we have what we call initial speed. That's what we were working on earlier, trying to explode off that fire line a little quicker. Now, we're talking about timing speed. Now, when you break down initial speed, there's four things you can work on. Relaxation, explosiveness, awareness of that explosiveness, uh, independent motion, okay, and broken rhythm. I use a form of two things on you there, the last two things. I use broken rhythm on you and I use independent motion. Now watch this carefully. Don't let these terms throw you. As long as you can do these exercises I'm showing you, you're okay. Take your time, develop it properly and slowly. Number one, I got you used to responding to a quick, jerky, tense movement. It's more like a yang type motion, not a yang motion. See, it was sort of hard and explosive rather than soft and slow. And then, all of a sudden, I went from hard jerky motion to a slow, soft motion. See how I switched rhythms on you? You understand what I'm saying? That's called broken rhythm. So I set you up to break your rhythm. I got you accustomed to one speed, one essence, the hard essence, and then I shift essence on you and I shifted speed on you. Broken rhythm means anytime there's a quick change in direction, speed, or essence. See, I didn't change direction, I still went on a straight line. 
but I changed my essence and also changed my speed. And the other thing I did was I got you used to responding to body movement. So you became accustomed to watching my body move. But then all of a sudden my body didn't move. My body froze. Watch, my whole shoulder and everything froze. The only thing that moved was my hand. You're watching my body and what was actually coming towards you, just a hand alone. See, my hand is moving independently of the body. That's why we call this independent motion, or the other term, weapon first. Now, do you understand what, what I did? Yes, now, this is a form of deceptive penetration. I am deceiving you at the same time penetrating your far line. That's where the term deceptive penetration comes from. Now, gentlemen, let's work on this. And to do so, let's do it in slow motion first. Now, what I'd like both of you to do is position over here, please. Can you both position over here facing this direction? Okay, Mike down on in, rake up a little bit. All right, let's position more on this angle if you can. Now watch me out of the corner of your eye. Watch me do this drill slowly. I want to uh, leave my glove off so it's easier to watch my hand. First, a sequence of motion, and this is important. Watch the breakdown. Now, if you're working on this technique, try to do it in front of a mirror. Instead of facing the mirror directly, sort of turn on a quarter angle. And try it so you watch the mirror and watch your hand at the same time. Now watch my hand slowly. This is called sequence of motion. It's very important. And I'm taking my time here because I don't know of a faster technique. First, the hand falls. Watch my hand. It falls until the hand is pointing straight at my opponent's face. Second step, my elbow moves. Watch the elbow. The elbow starts to carry the hand forward. Now just before the elbow straightens out, just before it straightens out, see it's not quite straight now. Now it is. Right at that point, that completes my initial move. That's called the initial move or your starting motion. Watch me pull it back now. Watch again. Fist falls. Elbow starts to extend. Stop. That completes my initial move. That's the most important part, making sure the hand goes before the body. Second step. <clears throat> what I'm going to do now is I'm going to lean the body, shift my weight as I start to torque, and at this point here, complete the footwork as I complete the punch. Let's just get the punch down without the footwork for now. Let's do it in slow motion first. Position. <clears throat> All right, do it with me. Hand falls. Elbow extends. Okay. Torque and lean the body a little bit as you shift forward. Okay, release the punch. Back reposition. Now when you fire this punch, there's many ways you can throw it. Myself, I like the way Bruce Lee did it in the Wing Chun system and, and ultimately his Jit Kune Do style. Your fist is straight in front of your face, like this. Elbow in front of your rib cage. Now boxers don't like this particular stance and kickboxers don't either because they're wide open for hooks over here. They like to keep the hand over here a little bit more and use the shoulder sometimes, or this hand, to pocket and cover their chin as such. Depends on how you build. All right. Now watch. Sometimes you keep the hand straight like this and you turn it over. Sometimes you keep it straight, sometimes you curve it in. Sometimes you will drop it in. Doesn't matter what style you're using as long as you can hit the target without being hit in return. Let's try it again, slow motion. Sequence of motion. Number one, hand drops. Elbow extends, start to hyperextend a little bit, torque. Now let's complete the footwork this time. Step in, one, two, back reposition. Let's do it a little bit faster now, about half speed. Watch me first. One, two, three, punch. All right, ready, move. All the way out, back reposition. Let's try it a little bit quicker this time. Ready, out, back reposition. Now, gentlemen, watch my footwork carefully here on the punch. Watch it. Just as I start my initial move, I'm not moving my feet yet. Then I start to lean, shift my weight, and torque. Right at that moment, watch, it's two steps. One, two. I only want you to move about six to eight inches on this footwork. See? You start trying to go like two feet, you're going to mess up, and you're going to have your body leading your technique. And it's going to telegraph itself. And your opponent's going to detect it and make you miss. Watch my footwork again. A little bit quicker this time. One foot at a time. One, two. One, two. Got me? Let's try it again. See, what we're doing is working on trying to cover a short amount of distance first. Then we work on a little bit more, then a little bit more. All right, so it's been about six months developing that first little short step. 
then maybe six months trying it about a foot away, and then you might go to 18 inches. I've never seen anybody adequately throw this technique with any kind of follow-through accuracy at two feet or greater. Of course, in tournament competition, you know this, Mr. Study, you see them doing this jump lunge stuff, and they say, well, as long as I can break a brick, why not call it a point? Well, the thing is, if you have a good counter fighter in front of you, or a good street fighter, somebody likes to fight you this close, that technique's not gonna work. And what do you do if you miss that movement? So you're kind of up there in the air, and the key to fighting is control your opponent. When you're up in the air, you have no control of your own position. How can you control your opponent's position? All right, position. Let's try it real fast this time. Let's see what happens. All right, ready? Back right, reposition. One more time. Ready? Back right, reposition. Now this time, I'd like you to work it the way I'd like people to work on it at home. What I want you to do is this. I want you to practice just doing the initial move at full speed. Watch my initial move. That's just a hand falling, elbow extended. Stop. That ends my initial move. Back free position. What? Initial move, relax. Initial move, relax. Now this time as I throw the initial move out, I'm going to complete it by adding the footwork and the lean to it. So watch. Here's the exercise. Initial move, initial move, punch. And what I'm concentrating on is this. And then let's work with each one of you to see how well you do it so we can sort of monitor you uh, and check it out. Watch this carefully. This is what we call leading center. And everybody has a leading center. Sometimes a person might uh, walk down the street and their leading center happens to be their forehead. Now I said forehead, keep this in mind. Your leading center could be your nose, it could be your eyes, it could be your chin, it could be your upper chest, lower sternum here. It could be your stomach, it could be your hips, your knees, your feet. All right. Now watch. Here's someone whose leading center is their forehead. Watch my forehead. Watch me carefully as I sort of walk around. Forehead. I right. see my forehead sort of leads my body. Now watch. Here's someone whose leading center are their eyes. Watch my eyes sort of lead my body. Seen people lead with their eyes. Here's someone who leads, uh, probably see one of these guys coming out of the gym. They lead with their shoulders. Watch, this guy's. You see those guys? Watch. And then uh, you've probably seen somebody lead, they're leading centers, their hips. Then you have secondary leading centers. Here's someone whose primary leading center is uh, their toes. And their secondary leaning center is their chin. Watch this. You've probably seen somebody walk down the street this way. Watch me carefully. Primary toes, secondary chin. Watch it. <laughs> Who you guys laughing at? Okay. Now watch. You, fighters have the exact same thing, same phenomenon. They all have leaning centers. Watch me carefully. And we're going to work on each one of each individually. Watch this. And this is how you practice it. Stand in front of the mirror. Quarter angle. Now watch me and you tell me what's my leading center. Do I lead with my hand properly? Do I lead with my head? Do I lead with my shoulders? Do I tighten up? Do I lead with my foot first? Do I lead with the body? Most of us are going to have a slight tendency to do one or two things. Taller people have a slight tendency to tilt their body. Watch my body tilt. They tilt just before they squeeze the trigger. Shorter, stumpier people have a slight tendency to do this. They tighten up. Now, I'm exaggerating it to make the point. They tighten up just before they go. Now, a good opponent can see you coming. They can detect that leading center. And it throws your timing off. So what I'm trying to do is get you to disguise your initial move. And a little later in summer, we're going to add something else, a little mobility to disguise your initial move a little further. Now, watch this drill. This is what I want you to do. You will position. You'll throw two initial moves quickly like this. One, relax, take your time. Two, relax, take your time. And then fire the punch. Now, gentlemen, watch me carefully. I'm going to do it wrong a couple times. You call out what's my leading center. Okay, position, watch me carefully. And you tell me what my leading center is. Ready? Relax. What went first? Shoulder and head. Shoulder and head. What do you think went first? Foot. Foot, okay. It was almost like the foot went first. That was my primary leading center. You're right, the shoulders was my secondary leading center. Good, good marksman. Let's try it again. Watch me carefully. <clears throat> Tell me what my leading center is. I'm doing it wrong again. Ready? 
Hand first. Hand first. What went first? Hips. Hips went first, and then what was secondary leading center? Shoulder. Shoulder? Okay, good call. Let's try it one more time. Watch me. <clears throat> this is incorrect again. Watch it. These are the things you typically find wrong. Watch it. See the head sort of dip a little bit? Okay, now we know what not to look for. See if I do it right this time. Let's try it again. One more time. Still shoulder. Ah! I was trying to catch you there, see if you're looking. All right, now, good call. Position over here, Mr. Bazetta. Let's see you try it first. <laughs> Mike, step over here, let's watch him. Step up just a little bit more, Rick. All right, angle it more off on this direction. Now, two initial moves, and then you follow through the punch. Now, before each move, practice it this way. Position, relax, get centered, and then just go with the impulse, okay? Go with two initial moves first. Hand first, good. Yeah. All right, now you sort of ran it together. Now, when you practice this at home, try not to run them together. Give me a little space, pause, a good distinctive pause between each move. Pause and then fire. So we can tell where the last move ended and the next new move begins. Got me? Let's try it again. Good. Good. All right, still ran the last two together a little bit. All right, let's. Slow it down between each move. When I say slow it down, slow the pace down. Don't put your speed in your back pocket. Let the speed participate in the movement. All right, let's try it again. Good. Good. I thought you did pretty good. Now, one little ingredient. This is what I want you to caution yourself on when you're working at home. Good mechanical movement, good form. However, there was no energy level there. There was no intensity. It was a very clinical, sterile type technique. See what I'm saying? Let's put that fireworks in there. Does everybody understand what I'm saying? It's real important to move with authority. And authority doesn't mean speed alone. Authority doesn't mean weight alone. Authority is also emotional substance. So when you fire this technique, don't hit your opponent like he's your best buddy. Hey, how you doing today? Bah! Hit him like he just did something that you don't like, that you don't condone. All right, position again. Let's put the fireworks in there now. Watch it again. Good. Good. Excellent, I thought. Great. Now you try once real fast, Mike. Let's go quickly, position. Now in your studios, go through each student individually. And on some days, you're gonna find that you got different parts of your body are tense and other parts are relaxed. Some people carry more tension in the right side than they do their left side. You wonder why sometimes your left kick is a little quicker than your right leg, yet you tend to be right-handed. Well, this is why. Tension has a way of, of uh, sabotaging your movements. So watch it. Let's try it once, all right? Hand first. Hand first. All right, now, let's start over again. Let's put the speed in it. Now, caution yourself there at home. When you're doing this technique, make sure hand explodes. Relax. Boom, hand explodes. Relax. Let's try it again. Load. Okay. Rick, I think his body went first, don't you? Step All right, watch. Here's your tendency. You sort of step first, and then the hand came through second. Watch it carefully. Let's try it again. This is good to sort of work on trying to detect the proper breakdown of the technique. And please remember this. It will take you at least a year to perfect this movement. It is not easy. As easy as it sounds to explain, it's hard to do. Try it again. Good. Good. Still a little tendency to lean the body. So you're a little afraid to take some risks. In the fight game, the fun of fighting is you can take a few risks. It's okay to mess up. See? At least you know what went wrong, whereas not trying at all, you're not going to gain anything. Got me? Let's try it again. Now position. Put some fireworks in there this time. Okay? Explode. Good. Good. Still a slight little tendency to move first. I hope at home there you can detect that leading center. Now, gentlemen, this is what I want you to try. Let me put my glove back on. Uh, can both of you position over here, facing this direction? I'm going to position here, rig back a little further. Mike over there a little bit, come up just a little bit. Now, let's work on trying to add this independent motion to the step through lunge punch. Watch how I'm going to break it down, slow motion. Oh, hand to go first. Watch my right hand. Hand starts to fall. Notice it's pointing up in the air now. As it starts to fall, 
Second step, elbow comes forward. Stop. That completes my initial move. Now, I start to torque a little bit as I'm leaning, shifting the weight forward, following through with my step. It's almost like this, gentlemen. My last uh, Tai Chi uh, master taught me this. It was an outlaw form of Tai Chi down in Hawaii. And he had me sit in a chair. And what he asked me to do is he wanted me to come out with these spear hand thrusts like this, a sequence of four, right at someone's rib cage from a seated position. I said, how am I going to get out of that chair and throw a punch? So what he said was, have the feeling of reaching out there and grabbing a rope and pulling yourself up. Grabbing rope with the next hand, pull yourself a little further. Grab a rope, pull yourself further. Grab a rope, pull yourself up. It's almost as if that's what we're doing. So like on the forward hand strike, what I'm doing is reaching out there, grabbing a rope, pulling myself forward. So you're not pushing off with a punch, you're pulling yourself off. Makes that lead off technique a little faster. Easier to set your opponent up. Now watch me carefully. Watch my hand, my right hand. It's almost as if I'm reaching out there, grabbing a rope, and pulling myself forward. That's the sensation we're after. Let's try it. Position. Sequence of motion first. Fist drops, elbow extends, torque, lean and shift the weight, follow through with a punch. Good, back reposition. Let's try it this way. After you work on that sequence a few times, come up a little bit, Mike. This time, let's try hand first, hand first, and then Fire the punch. Ready? And first, and first, punch. Back reposition. Now let's try it again. My command. Initial move, initial move, punch. Make sure when you're practicing this that weapon always goes first. There'll be a tendency to do this. Watch me do it incorrectly. Now watch me. Hand first. Hand first. Then when I punch, I go body first as a punch. Watch that, folks. All right, let's try it one more time. Let me see it. Ready? In independent motion. Punch. Punch. All the way through. Go. Good. Good, 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 good. Now, as an experiment, let's try it against each other. All right, position against each other here, please. Square off against each other. All right, just your distance first. Now we're going to do all these principles at once. Relax, think about exploding, think about digging that big toe in the rear foot, pushing off with that toe, using it as much as possible. Good knee dip here in your knees, nice spring in motion so you can bridge that gap fast. It's impossible with straight legs, all right? Position the hands, keep the lower hand kind of low, give you, just use it for balance, open up the targets. Okay, Mike, I want you to try to fire and hit Rick first, using that independent motion now. All right, don't let him know when it's coming. See if you can tag him. Now, adjust the distance which feels comfortable for you. Rick, you're going to work the counter punch. All right, let's see what happens now. All right, Rick, I saw him lean the body first. Did you not? Mm -hmm. Now, when you're doing this drill, keep this in mind. Try to teach your sparring partner how to beat you. Every time I work with a sparring partner, I taught all my sparring partners how to beat me. And it sort of worked because four of my sparring partners became world champions. Now, when you work with your partner, Always try to help him do his best. By you helping him to do his best, okay, now you gotta figure out a way to stand a step ahead of him. So it enables you to do better. Does everybody follow me? And that's the real purpose of a good martial artist, to help others achieve the same things you've achieved. We don't all have to be champions. We don't all have to be black belts. But we can all help others become achievers. All right, position again. All right, Mike, try to get that hand to lead off first. Watch this carefully, make sure the hand goes first, okay? Right, reposition. Now get your hand more into a realistic fighting position. See your center line so open this way? There we go. Now Muhammad Ali used to do this. He used to sort of choke his hands forward a little bit. Then you have a, see, like that. So he didn't have as far as a reach when he fired that technique. All right, but keep in mind, this is just an exercise. All right, position. Let's see what happens. Good, back reposition. Now more of a realistic sparring position. More of a realistic sparring position. Good, now let's reverse it. Rick, this time I want you to lead off. All right, now Mike, I didn't see quite enough hyperextension. I saw you moving in straight up. So hyperextend a little bit. See, once I can hit my point, I can stand up with my power movement. See, once I hit my point, see, hit boom, then I can follow through with my power technique. So, somebody might ask at home, 
Where's the power in that technique? Power is one of the last things you work on. Let's learn how to hit the target first. Once I can hit the target, once I have accuracy, then I start working on my power. All right, positioning it. All right, Rick, you're coming back this time. Watch it carefully. Good move, good move, excellent. Let's stop there, that's, that's looking good. Now, reposition, let me position it, it's Rick. Now watch. Sometimes, when you're doing this drill, instead of looking right at your opponent, this is what I like you to look for. Before a man fires that punch, often they will cock the shoulder. Before they fire a kick, often they cock that hip. So basically, I look at the trunk of a man's body when I'm sparring. In other words, I direct my eyesight in that direction, but instead of looking right at the body, I sort of watch the gray zones around it. Sort of a field of vision using my peripheral awareness, like driving a car down the street at night in a rainstorm. I don't look at the street. I aim my eyes sort of at the street, but out of the corner of the eyes, I watch the side of the road. It gives me a perspective. Now, same thing you do when you're sparring. Don't look right at the opponent. I remember in Okinawa, it taught me to look at man's eyes. Well, after 23 years as a black belt, never been hit by an eyeball, I realized that's not what you look for. Now, this time, I want you to show you, I want to show you how to change your approach a little bit. All right, now square off against me. This time, increasing the speed a little bit. What I'm going to do is this. I'm going to do a simple step through lunge punch. As soon as you see me coming, you try to beat me to the draw with a counter punch. Now, if your opponent happens to have a slight edge of speed over you, or he has advantage of reach over you, I'm going to show you how to change your approach to throw his timing off. All right, as soon as you see me coming, try to attack me. Okay, see I'm running into that punch, I don't like the exchange, so I gotta go back here and think, hmm, I got to make an adjustment. Let's try it again. Draw the punch and then step in when you count a punch. Everybody see what I'm doing? Watch it in slow motion. What we're working on here is something that comes from my angular attack uh, series tape. I'm changing my approach. When I went straight in towards my opponent, this is called a direct angular attack. Often a, a direct angular approach Somebody's got advantage of reach or the advantage of speed. This particular approach doesn't nullify their advantage. Remember, one of the key